Welcome to Late Night with Linda Rosa, where we get down to the arts of the matter. My darlings, mis queridos, welcome y bienvenidos to Late Night with Linda Rosa, getting down to the art of the matter. Welcome back to the podcast. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for your time and attention, which is invaluable. I say that every episode, but it is true. Thank you so, so, so much. Um, I, I'm happy that you guys are joining me. <laughs> I hope you guys have had a really great week. And um, please let me know how everything's going. How's everything moving along? How are you liking this season? How's it treating you? What's going on? So let me know how you're doing, guys. Um, this is also a reminder, guys, if you haven't subscribed yet to our YouTube channel, Late Night with Linda Rosa, please do so. I would love your support. And also, we have Instagram, Facebook. We have it all. Just go to the link in our bio at uh, Late Night with Linda Rosa on Instagram. And you just click on the link in the bio, and it'll take you to everything. iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, you name it, I'm on it. Go get it, right? So I hope to see you guys joining and following and subscribing and all that good stuff and we also have evie on as the guest host for this season so we're gonna have her in a second i can't wait for you guys to see her and it's her last episode with me anyway uh, <laughs> this week's episode is really really a simple one and it's about giving advice the art of giving advice solicited and then non-solicited we're gonna get into the details of that and um it's pretty simple how do I feel about it sometimes you got to keep your mouth shut because sometimes it's just not welcome and maybe your opinion may actually make some shit worse however um I believe that giving advice uh requires a lot of love and genuine and honesty and and it has to be done with integrity I feel like there's a lot that goes into giving advice but you know um it's a matter of when to involve yourself. You, I don't think, I just don't want you guys to ever put yourself in a situation where somebody makes you feel unwelcome because you said something trying to help them. So I feel like it's a lot about reading the situation, reading why, what advice you're giving and why you're giving it. Um, and I know that a lot of people like to give advice either because they love somebody a lot or because they just feel like their opinion matters and everything. It doesn't. I'm here to tell you that shit. Um... So that's what we're going to get into today. We're going to talk about the power of good advice, bad advice, giving it when it's solicited, when it's not, when to know if it's solicited or not, and um, how to listen to your own fucking advice. Because I feel like we like to talk a lot, but do we listen to what we say? That's what we're going to talk about today. But let's talk about Evie. Hmm. Welcome to the show, Mama. What's up? How you doing? You sad? Hmm. I've had uh, better days. It's all right. I'm, 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 I'm having some mixed emotions listening. Yeah. I'm happy we're, we're wrapping this project up. I'm yeah. so happy that you invited me. And I'm so happy that two women are here working together instead of against each other. So, you know, Latina I'm, I'm here for that. Yeah. But I am sad that I will be not, you yeah. know, not as close as I used to be. No. We were neighbors for a while. So we were. We're I'm moving, I'm moving to the burbs, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Forget the city, city life. life. <laughs> city life is gone. <laughs> nah, man. I, you know, I'll keep it short and we'll get into the topic because I feel like it's gonna get emotional because I'm an emotional motherfucker. So, you it's know, for been... somebody that's so hard, she's so soft. I <laughs> see, but it's true. You see, all she got. I haven't is... cried once. I'm gonna say that I <laughs> cried at least five times. So don't say that. It was off camera. <laughs> <laughs> On camera, maybe once. <laughs> Off camera, maybe about seven, but they don't gotta. <laughs> they, I mean, she's I'm soft. Like, she's soft. I y'all. am. Don't, man. don't let her scare y'all. No, man. <laughs> be, that's what I've been trying to tell people. I was like, y'all swear somebody here hard. Who? I'm just a passionate person. I'm a protective person. Right. And when it's necessary, I'll, you know, I'll do what I need to do. But I'm not, mm-hmm. man. I'm a sensitive fucking asshole. <laughs> I'm a sensitive asshole. That's how. That's me. Yeah. I am a sensitive asshole. You know what I mean? Like I. And it's, uh, uh, man, right. it's just, uh, it's, it's been, a, it's been definitely the it, highlight of my, of my quarantine to be able to, oh, to come and, and work with you. Well, you know, <laughs> I, it, I get very nervous asking anybody for any kind of help. I, I'm, I'm one that doesn't ask for help. I'm, I, and I've had to learn that it's okay to be like, I can't, or I need help, you know? 
and it, it I was I was a little bit nervous to ask you to join because I was like, man, she cool. She's like too cool for school, you know. And I was like, I don't know, man. And being that we we have we've worked together, but we never really hung out like that. I was like, I don't know because I know that my personalities could could be a little bit, you know, spicy, or I could come off a little, ah, you know, and they don't sit well with everybody. So I was like, I don't know, but I was like, man, just ask, yo, she's fine. I, I I knew that I wanted your opinion on things because I love your outlook on things. And once I realized that she she's cool, man. Like I, I had to remind myself that when I met Evie at work, Evie always had the same fucking energy. It was like, yo, I'm here for it. What up? Like she was chill. It's just always chill. And even when I was super hype and super like extra, she was like, you know, I was like, I need that energy. I knew I knew when we decided to have somebody else, like a guest co-host on the show before he even finished the sentence i was thinking of you i Me. was like i was like evie evie it just made sense because we're very similar in a lot oh, of we're ways so very different. but we're so fucking different yeah. like we're <laughs> yeah. but somehow it makes sense yeah. like it, it just there's a the gap isn't that big we're a little cafe con leche cafe cafe con leche that's me. un cafecito that's oh, it that's you know so um I knew I knew that I need I wanted someone on the podcast that would obviously be able to carry this conversation with me but be able to be confident in disagreeing with me when sh they felt it yeah. like not just agree even though you didn't just because it's my show now I want you to be real and have a conversation now, everything that I say may not be right you i'm not saying everything that i do and say is legit i may be wrong on some shit and i wanted someone to come back respectfully and have this conversation and i knew and i knew from jump that evie would be it so it's really it, it's really I'm so glad you thought of me i did is, first it when, wasn't like when you asked me i was like oh yeah i'm there i mean come <laughs> it wasn't on. even I'm a, a question i'm yo. a leo i love to just <laughs> check people yeah. but in the nicest way possible yeah, but man. i think in this place it was a safe place it was a place where you were allowed to speak with no judgment and yeah. i was allowed to speak with no judgment yeah. and i think that's an important place to be in i need to you should always surround yourself by people that are going to allow you to be the truest versions of yourself and that's what i want and um and i'm i'm, I'm glad that you think of me in that way mm -hmm. because i do i do try my best to, to try to empower other women mm -hmm. especially women in business mm -hmm. and women who are constantly being told no so I think that it's yeah. so important to lift each other up, and I'm glad that you looked to me because yeah. I really enjoyed my time here. Thanks. I'm also, I mean, <laughs> and it's true for for women, for people who hear no all the time. My my heart, like when she was like, yeah, because it wasn't even like, oh, I mean, let me think about it. it was like, I right, bet when I was like, really? <laughs> and she's let me tell you something. She's been with it. We and believe it or not, podcasts are not easy. We've put in some serious time and. She, you've been so calm and cool about everything, you know, and on top yeah, of that, I did I, my I, photos. I, I definitely, when you were giving me the ideas mm -hmm. and what you had in mind and all that, I was like, well, let's you do know, it. Yeah. let's do it. And it wasn't even like, oh my God, I'm here for it. But I'm, I'm listening. I've got my heart open. I've got my, you know, my, my eyes open. I have every, my arms and everything mm -hmm. just here to allow you to try to flourish as much mm -hmm. as you can. Mm -hmm. And it's not my place to tell you how to do your project. Mm -hmm. And I want to see your ideas come to life mm -hmm. in the best way that they can. And if I can be a tool for that, I'm here for there it. You know. <laughs> so, so with, with all that, you know, we'll just get started with the topic. It's and, just been an honor, really. And I feel like this topic is, is perfect because all we've been doing is giving it's giving advice. advice. So, but, but there is definitely an art to it. There's an art to giving us advice. And I feel like we're, this is a great topic because I feel like you give advice differently than me, I think. Yeah. I think that, but I think that in the end, we both do it with love in our heart. Yes. It's a great intention. It's just that our deliveries may be a little different. Yeah. Um, and we may have different opinions about it. So we're going to yeah. get into it. So giving advice. I think it's important to have a connection with people that you trust that you can speak to, to, to get information, to get advice. I think it's important to have that relationship. You know what I'm saying? And I also think that it's important to get advice from people from that are completely opposite than you or opposite enough that they'll give you a perspective you didn't have. And I feel like you've done that for me so much on this show that I'm like, okay, you know what I'm saying? And it was and it was never a situation where I'm like, I fucking disagree. It was more of like, yo, that's a, that's a whole different ass perspective. You know what I'm saying? So... That's what we're talking about giving advice. And I hope that as you guys watch, 
the episodes and all of that that you see how although we disagree and and we speak on things it's still an open respectfulness about it you know what i mean there's no intention of making anybody look worse than the other it's more of like there's women who feel like evie there's women who feel like me there's women who low-key like evie there's women who extras fuck like me you know what i'm saying and somehow they still get along i think that giving you advice is 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 tough um for me especially because I'm always taking advice, even when people are just not even intentionally giving that advice, I'm always listening, because to me, I'm constantly like trying to see myself in other people, and that's how I sort of, how I, how I walk, how I talk, how I am. But giving advice is really hard for me, because I always, I've had really bad luck. I'm learning it now as, I'm, as I've gotten older, but for a long time, I had really bad luck with the way I gave advice coming off as knowing more than you, or mm-hmm. somehow belittling you, or somehow making you seem or feel smaller than you are when I really am just trying to guide you in the, in the direction of light. But then I realized that unsolicited advice is, is almost criticism, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, if, if I'm not ready to take that piece of advice, I feel like you're attacking me. And I'm not listening to you mm-hmm. thoroughly. I think our, our non, non-verbal cues, because not everybody's like, hey, I, I need some advice. A lot of people... That they need it? Yeah. Like, what are some non-verbal cues to you? Other than somebody obviously verbally asking you, is someone lingering, like, if someone's dancing around a topic, or they come at you once with some anonymous shit. If I'm talking to you, and I'm like, yo, Linda, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going through some shit, and this and this is mm-hmm. happening. That, at, you, at you want what? advice. But how do you, what, how, where's, where's the difference between I want advice and I'm just venting? Because some people just need to get it off their chest. They don't necessarily care what you got to say. Mm-hmm. They just need to say it out loud. You're absolutely right. And so sometimes you, I don't want to hear you. Sometimes I need you to listen. Yeah, so um, Because I know I need help with that. So. so I, when someone's talking to me about an issue and they're like, oh my God, la, 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 la. Um, sometimes I even ask you, you want me to tell you what I think? Mm. Or, I mean... If it were me. If it were me, you know what I'm saying? Like, I would I would kind of, because sometimes what you want to do, because if someone's venting to you, they're already feeling all kinds of pressures and all kinds of emotions, and then on top of that, you're giving them advice directly to them. Sometimes you got to turn some shit around on you. Not make it about you, but make the example through you as opposed to saying, it's as opposed to me saying, Evie, well, you shouldn't have, I, I, I would have been like, well, I mean, if it was me, maybe I would have done this, mm-hmm. I would have done that. But if you're really not sure about giving um, advice, especially it's unsolicited, wanted, yeah. wanted advice, what I just, you got to go, you have to, you have to, you have to be in tune enough. Like, you have to be mature enough to understand. Like, some people, if, if I'm talking about a topic and I'm like, I don't know, um... Listen, I got boy problems. Okay, listen, man. I've been, I know I've been struggling. Me, I know he loves love me, him. but like... I don't know what to do. I don't want you to tell me to break up with him, by the way. So Right. So <laughs> right. I want you to tell me what I want to hear. Honestly, you know what? To be real with you, my 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 segue to that is to ask you questions. Mm-hmm. If I'm asking you questions about what you're talking to me about mm-hmm. and I see that you're like avoiding, you're trying to escape, you're not trying to go deep, you're really then not trying to hear it. You're not then I'm not gonna go mm-hmm. in because my thing is this. If I'm asking you to talk more about what you just told me about and you went from talking 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 to dodging, it, a little dodging bit. it then in my head i'm like so then you might not be ready to hear what i have to tell you because what mm-hmm. do i say on the on the show all the time don't ask me shit if you're not ready for the answer and let me tell you why i say that because i feel like as a friend it is a disservice a friend family whatever it is a disservice for me to give you some bullshit ass advice especially when you ask me for it mm-hmm. If you, if you genuinely was like, I don't know what to do, Linda, what's up? I'd be like, okay. Yeah, and because but, more often than not, people aren't really direct to asking because I feel like it shows yeah. maybe weakness. Mm-hmm. But sometimes people need to hear it. Mm-hmm. And it's important, and they want you to say it, but they don't really want to ask you. Mm-hmm. And that's, I guess, what you're looking for. Because you know? some, yeah, I think I, that's... Yeah. that's Cause some people smart. feel some people feel like maybe they're embarrassed to ask. Maybe they don't want. They feel like they don't want to bother you. Cause I feel like that. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I want to talk to somebody or get an opinion, and I don't want to call. Cause in my head I'm like they're probably busy having yeah. a good time, and then my fucking sad ass now wants to call. So yeah. I know, guys, that you're thinking these things or you're going through these things, mm-hmm. and I get that. If I'm gonna call you and mm-hmm. I'm going through something as my friend, and I just want some uh, like an advice before I get into what I want to talk about. 
I'm gonna ask you how you're doing, how's it going? Because what if you're what if you're having a really bad day? Yeah. You even if I want to talk to you, you may not be in a state to give me some good advice. Right. So and, and the thing is, remember, you're asking for someone to give you something. Yeah. So be considerate of that person's time. And and I think something mm -hmm. that some people definitely don't do enough of, and I think this is kind of why mm -hmm. sometimes advice can be misconstrued. Mm -hmm. You talk about things too prematurely you mm. haven't even digested it enough you haven't really you know taken it in broken it down put it in a place of where you really understand the problem mm -hmm. and then you pour it onto somebody else and a lot of the times that comes off as like I, like I said I have always had a really hard time I think that if you're pouring something out to me you already because I'm that type of person I digest it I look at it I you know I, I pass it around in my head and I just sit there and then once I have like a real like I'm genuinely sad about this like it mm -hmm. wasn't I was having a bad day it wasn't that you know i'm hormonal it wasn't mm -hmm. like i really broke it down and this really is something that is affecting me mm -hmm. and i'll go ahead and take the time out to speak to somebody i feel like that person is like you're you're opening up to me because you've already you've already broken that down and mm -hmm. you're ready to hear something mm -hmm. but you know a lot of the times people too prematurely just say something out loud because they're having a moment and they bring somebody else into their world and then they get over it mm -hmm. and then then now you're left, just like you're, you're left, left like, with like the blue balls of emotion yeah <laughs> you're just like so you told me all that for nothing so it's yeah. just like i feel like a lot of the time receiving advice or getting advice from mm -hmm. somebody comes off wrong because mm -hmm. you haven't even processed it mm -hmm. you know you mm -hmm. haven't even broken it down so it's just like and a lot of times it's details too because mm -hmm. remember you're I'm, I'm you're giving me advice based on what i'm telling you yeah but that, but what I'm telling you is based on how I received it at that at that moment. Yeah. And a lot of times, like sometimes, like there's been times like I've been upset, and then like a friend of mine would be like, "Yeah, but B, come on, is that serious though?" But at that moment, it was. But at that moment, it was. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And and sometimes I'm not gonna lie, it's frustrating when I'm there and the person's not there. But then mm -hmm. at the end of the day, think about it, they're not there. She said the same thing three times, and somehow it worked. It, but it makes sense, right? <laughs> <laughs> it makes you mad that they're not there because they weren't there, there but, but they, they weren't, weren't there. there Ooh, bars <laughs> bars yo see you guys have to i know we get in our feelings and sometimes this is really i listen i've been i get i'm there i get there i still get the, I, I live there i live there you know what i'm saying <laughs> but what but i've i've learned to mm. take into consideration the fact that i cannot expect others to be in my emotional state mm. and not and and honestly and i know you guys may feel bad when you hear people having a good time and you're not there but understand that that's their life that's what they're doing with their life i can't live for you i can't be like oh so you're sad okay so i'm gonna be sad too i can't mm. and i'm not i'm not trying to be selfish i'm just saying you i think there's a time i think it's there's an art in giving up the art in giving advice is timing mm. tone and openness yeah. openness in the message you're giving and openness in the message you're receiving yeah so unless you're ready for the the less the timing is right and you're gonna and you know that your tone is gonna be decent and you and you're open for the message or for the word you're gonna give then then i think that you like you said you need to meditate on the situation because a lot of times it, it's not what happened is what we do with what happens mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying it's uh, it's not it's sometimes it's not our responsibility what happens to us it's our responsibility what we do with it all i can tell y'all is that it just man i know that sometimes it's tough and then there's friends that know like i have friends that right now i hit them up and then y'all was just thinking so i get it yeah. And it's in and, and, and be open to asking for advice. Should we always be open to to getting advice? You think? Or should, um, is that, no. There's a note to that too. Yes, That's because yes, because um, sometimes like I like you said, if I'm not ready to hear it, I don't want to hear it. Mm -hmm. It's unsolicited, and sometimes unsolicited advice is an insult. Like you're some, there's some people who are disrespectful about this unsolicited advice. Mm -hmm. You swear somebody want, oh, I'm glad you said that. You swear somebody want to hear you. They don't. Mm -hmm. You can't walk around everywhere you go thinking that, that everybody needs to hear everything you got to say about everything. Don't nobody want to hear you all the time. And the person that's constantly giving unsolicited advice, you start to become something that we start to tune you out. Definitely know it background. Though. 
it's just background and literally you walk into the room and you're gonna be the person that when you walk into the room people roll their eyes or they walk away because oh something is oh uh, here we go go that way like yeah. it, you know so you guys have to be mindful mm -hmm. everybody don't need to know all your opinions you know what i'm saying and and the great thing about having a podcast is that this is my opinion these are my this is my advice and you are welcome to listen but you're also welcome to not listen and that's what I love about podcasts. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes I think y'all need to take the podcast approach. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You like think, you think the guy that's always giving the advice, the guy or girl always giving the advice, you think they're the ones that have the hardest time listening? Advice? Yeah, because they're too busy talking. Mm -hmm. You're too busy talking. You're too busy. If you're giving, if you're constantly giving advice mm -hmm. all the time, you're not listening and you're not living your life, and you're you nosy. Mm -hmm. You're nosy. And, and you, and then people that are constantly get sorry, people that are constantly mm -hmm. giving advice probably got the most fucking mess in their life. Probably, I'm just saying, because and that's my thing. Like you, you got, come on, man. You don't. That everybody don't want to hear you all the time. And sometimes unsolicited advice comes at the worst fucking time. Mm -hmm. You might set somebody off, mm -hmm. especially if your unsolicited advice is not catering to their emotions. That's why unsolicited is not great all the time. Sometimes unsolicited is good it's what because you need to hear. Yeah, sometimes it's what you need to hear and, 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 and people know. Like, sometimes you get advice and you weren't even expecting it and it's right. But I'm telling you, it's about time, tone, and and openness. And time, tone, delivery. Yeah, openness. Like, you have to you have to read the situation, yo. If you're not good at reading situations by now, then you need to stay away from giving advice. Be open with being in tune to receiving the message. Yeah. If you're going to ask for it, understand what you're asking for because there's nothing more irritating than somebody asking me for advice and then not listen like wanting don't you get them or want to hear yeah, wanting to hear what you want to hear yeah. nah i'm not yo all my friends and family oh. you uh, any any loved one or anybody i know if you know me my whole life, you know I don't play around about uh, yo soy muy honrada, and I'm going to tell you what it is. And a lot of people, whether it's family, friends, or whatever, really don't fuck with me because they know I say it like it is. And let me tell you something. I'm never going to change. I may change some things in my life because it's improving, but I'm never going to stop from being real with you and honest with you because it makes you feel better. No. Mm -hmm. If you ask me, it is my duty. It is my responsibility as being Linda and whoever I am to you to give you the truth from my heart. And that shit is hard to listen to. And let me tell you something. I have people in my life that tell me the real deal, honest truth. And it's a hard pill to swallow sometimes. Check me once. He did it really well, though. You know what I'm saying? But but I listened. Yeah. And it was unsolicited. But it was something but it was effective. At that I need I yeah. needed that. And it made a world of a difference. Yeah. And, and because I know him. I knew where he was coming I with it. I think that advice is something that is very, very, it's like a little bomb. And you got to make sure you handle it with care yeah. because it could come off and it could really change somebody's life. It really and can. then if it ends up being advice that hurts somebody in, in a way that like mm -hmm. they took your advice and mm -hmm. it didn't work for them, that could also be a liability to you mm -hmm. and your friendship. So. Especially when, when it's advice regarding relationships. Yeah. That's real like, tricky, I said what you said and he left me anyways. Or, like, or, <laughs> or, or, or I said what I said and you went back anyway. Oh, I hate that. That's just the and I, I don't know, man. When it comes to that part, when it comes to that, I'd rather just like, I'd rather just be your support. You know what I mean? Because the thing is this, when you love somebody, love is blind and, and some you get, you know, some people can get over certain things, right? But like I said, at, at that time you're in those emotions and you mm -hmm. feel some kind of way, and then I'm like, and then you, you agree you, with them. You know, yeah, yeah, you better leave. Ah, right. ah. And then two <laughs> days later, y'all had some good sex, and now y'all back together. Now I look like a dick. I said what I said, and now I can't take it back. Yeah, and I, you know, so it's yeah. just it, it puts you in a really, really bad position. So yeah. when someone says, "Well, what if my friend asked me if I saw her boyfriend?" I want to provide you with the most support I can. But my advice is always, I don't want to say generic, but I always leave it blanket. Yeah, I always leave it open want. because at the end of the day, I don't know yeah. where your heart is at. I know where your mind is at, but I don't know where your heart is at. And you might just be really, really upset. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to sit here and shit on your man. If it's a physical type shit, that's a whole different ballgame. I'm not talking about that. I'm, because physical, I'm fucking him up or he's going to jail. Yes. One or two. Either I, I'm not a gangster like that, but I'm saying I'm a, I'm a handle it. That's a whole different ball game.
That's a whole different ballgame. Physical is different. But I'm talking about when she's like complaining and shit. I'm going to keep it open because I, people love different. And you might, you might think that it's over, but you might just be venting. And three days later, you're, you're back. Yeah. And it's just, it just, and the thing is now, your girl is hearing what you're thinking about this dude. And now she looking at you funny because yeah. I also, that's like, yeah. it's messy. Don't do it. Just keep it, keep, like, if she's like, oh, he cheated on me. I'm like, look, I'm not going to tell you what to do. I know that love is important and, and I know that love is part of, like, I know you guys love each other a lot. Whatever. La, 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 you, la. You, boo -boo. But I want you to make the decision that's best for you. Would I stay? I don't know because, you know, yeah. I would then I would use that as a reason as to why I wouldn't stay. So that that would be my form of advice. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because, you know, they're going to hit you up. Would you leave them? I'm like, look, I can't tell you what to do. But if a guy did A, B, C, D, E, I don't know that I could stay. But I don't also don't love him like that. You do. So I have to leave that decision to you. Yeah. But these are the things that would take that would make the decision for me. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I would leave it like that. And I definitely wanted to touch on that before we ended it because I feel like that's the biggest problem with advice is people getting way too involved mm -hmm. in each other's relationships. I don't want to be part of that. And then also people get to, then they then the, your advice worked and then now they're calling you all the time. Now you're running somebody's relationship. I'm not your third girlfriend mm -hmm. or second, sorry. I'm not, I'm not part of this, bro. I don't know. Don't call me con todo eso. Mm -hmm. And if I got to fix all your problems, then what the fuck you with them for? Or her for, bro? Yeah. I will I will love to help you, but I can't be in the relationship for you. Yeah. That's all I could tell you. So to, before we wrap this up, because, you know, mm -hmm. giving advice, I need you to give me some advice. What's what are up? What are the three things that you just... Avoid. Avoid. Money, religion, family. Let me tell you why. And it's not that I'll never talk about it. I just don't expect me to give you detailed that's fucking advice on that. Let me tell you why. Those are the three most personal, 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 intimate things you could talk about. I could talk about sex all day long. I got no problem. But not Jesus Cristo. No. Because because religion is so sacred to some people. To some people, it's, it's okay. It's really, I'm Catholic or I'm Jewish or whatever. And it's cool. But some people really... And, I'm, and I respect that. I respect that thoroughly. Yeah. And, and the thing is, I personally, I'm not going to lie to you, I'm not a religion expert. Mm -hmm. And I would never want to, un I, don't, I never want to mistakenly insult so or belittle or say something out of pocket because I'm not knowledgeable. And it's religion is, it's, Lord Jesus, this sacred. You don't touch that. That's, that people believe what they want to believe. Let them have that. I don't get it, and people and people could get physical. It could turn around real fast because that's their spirit. That's their know, spirit. Yeah. yeah, money. People value the do dollar differently. Mm -hmm. How I see five dollars, Diddy doesn't see five dollars the same way. Mm -hmm. Five dollars for me, I buy a gallon of milk. Five dollars for him, he tips somebody. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's I can't and I can't tell you what to do with your money because let's just say, well, Linda, I got I don't know hundred dollars in the bank, and you're like. It. You're gonna say that's it. I'm like, you got a hundred dollars in the bank. Shit, yeah. it's different. So, and, and the thing you don't is, wanna break I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't want to break. I don't want to fuck up your. Because the thing is, what if I value the dollar more than you, or you value it more than me? Mm -hmm. and, and I'm not saying I'm worse than you, or you're worse than me. It's just we don't see it the same. Mm -hmm. And then what if? And then people start comparing about what they make. It gets real personal. Mm -hmm. Oh, I make more. Or, oh, why we? I don't make enough. Or everybody wants to get defensive because mm -hmm. now people don't want to. It's messy, mm -hmm. and it's not everybody. It's nobody's business what you got in your pocket. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, you never know somebody's intention. You don't know if this conversation is to pa meterte mano. You don't know. Shit is crazy out here these days. I'm not saying you can't trust nobody, but money's funny. Mm -hmm. Can get funny real fast. You got to be careful. And the last is family, and I'm gonna tell you why. I'm. I love my family very much, and I'm very protective. Very protective. I don't like people fucking with my fam. That's my family. I'm like that with my friends. I we were talking about love language and stuff, and I think that for me, the way that I express my love, um, other than than uh, affection, because I'm like an affectionate person. I'm like I love to cater. Oh my god, you are hungry? Want to eat? Let me. Mm -hmm. I'm like all over people, but I'm also very protective. 
and I'm very protective of my family. So I can only imagine how you feel about yours. And I, again, what if you're joking around and I'm and I say something or you or I'm joking around and you say something and for you it's funny because maybe in your family y'all play like that that's cool but I don't play about my family and you know when you know how the how kids like to play fight sometimes and then and then it gets serious it gets like that with family you know how somebody may hit you a little too hard and you're like oh we're so we not playing no more yeah. it could get like that with family and like what if like me and you are cool, and then we have an event. My family's there, your family's there, and then you did, but you didn't know that, or, or or maybe you said something. I don't know. I just feel like somebody could say something even unintentionally, and it'll go left. Yeah, something that's normal for them. It'll be normal. And for you, it's like excuse me. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because like for example, I love my mother with my life. With my life, I will put my life on the line for my mom. There's nothing I won't do for my fa for my parents. My mom is everything. If you even and, and I, the moment I see anybody coming at her kind of funny, I'm I'm ready to go. So imagine somebody else. So so money, religion, family, those are the three things that I I do not I do not feel as comfortable giving advice. giving advice on. But if it was like a situation like it was serious, I keep it very neutral, very simple, but very honest and respectful. Respectful. Because even if a family member did whatever was fucked up, it does not give you a right to now disrespect them. Because remember, family's family. And even when family fight, eventually they cool again. And now and, you, and and now you look like you a look dick. Like a whole dummy. So those are the three yeah. things. So I would end it Absolutely. on that. I think that I hope that we gave you guys some really good I advice. I definitely learned a lot. I, yeah. I struggled with it, so I, yeah. I definitely learned a lot. Yeah, you know, and I and I and I, the reason I want to talk about it because I have I love I have a love for people, and I'm always I don't know I'm always like out to, I'm protective. I'm telling you I'm like how you doing? You okay? Ah uh -uh, la la, you know. And I think some I just want to my heart is always out to like help and or it's, and be it's, there. And you have to I I know we're gonna end it, but. There's so little people that really care about what you guys yeah. say. There's so little people that really care about your problems. They're uh -huh, and, and mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you to death. But you genuinely, I genuinely, you genuinely care. want to care for your, yeah. for your, for your family, yeah. for your friends, for the yeah. people who are, you know, giving their time to yeah. you. You want to give their time back to yeah. them. So I think that it's important. This is something that is so naturally you. Yeah, and you give it with so much love. I so. do. I, I genuinely, I just, I, I, you know what it is. I just feel like I've been through so much in my life that I wish that I had somebody to. Yeah, to do that. Yeah, we said that for for yeah, for for yeah. women, and you know. And I want that to. That's why I call like I I came. I said that today. I was like late night safe zone, cause I want y'all to just be able to just come to just come listen, mm -hmm. come ask me. Let me talk to you. Let me reach out, yo. I'm telling you, there's no judgment here. I'm not perfect. There's a lot of stuff that she disagreed on, and I was like, okay, cause she right. Some unsolicited advice from a stranger may work. It may it may work. What if you're like sitting in a park you, when you, you you would be the perfect stranger? So you know I you don't oh know key, my girl. Linda Rosa the perfect stranger because she's gonna tell you because I'm gonna because even if a stranger came up to me and they came and asked me I'm gonna still talk. You know why I don't give, and I'm I'm definitely gonna tell them the truth. You know why? Because I don't fucking know you. I'm gonna That's go what fuck. I'm saying. I don't give a shit. I'm gonna tell you. Say I'm, what I'm trying I'm, to say. I got, I'm with it. I, I, <laughs> You don't know me, so you about to hurt I'm my about feelings to tell and you. Away. Yeah, but you know what? That be after I end the show, I'm gonna end it like this. <laughs> For everyone who's ever met Linda, anytime I ever said anything, understand that it came out of love, man. And a lot of times, people, oh, she, yeah, you just you talk too hard, no, because you gotta listen, bro. What you think? I'm, you gotta ask me for advice. Well, you know, no, you fucked up. You, I wouldn't like. I'll, I'll tell you for real. Now I'll probably change my tone a little bit if it helps you, but I still need to be authentic to me. And I want people to know, Evie, that I want all my friends and family to always know that whenever they address me, that they know I'm gonna go. Yo, let's call it Linda, cause she she'll let you know what's up. Mm -hmm. I'm that I'm that person, and I've always been that person, and I'm always gonna be that person. Yeah. So, so that's what I mean, guys. You have anything that you do, do it with love, man. Don't be a dick about it. And be mindful about when you're giving it. And everybody don't want to hear you all the time. Okay? Welcome back. This week's Artist of the Week. I can't tell you how much I've wanted him on the show. Why I'm going to tell you why I adore him so much. It's really, to be honest with you, 
low key it's like an honor to have best aka nitty green on the show right welcome welcome oh. hey. so let me give you guys a little backstory about how i met uh best and why i adore him so much i met best working at work at a previous employment at a previous job and um the first thing that myself and the other women that we worked with noticed is he, he's just this dude is cool man he's just he's suave he's just cool he could get away with like murder because he's just he got that damn he's just got that energy and i'm gonna ask him because i need him to score you fellas on uh -huh. chivalry how uh -huh. to be smooth because yo best he doesn't even try it's just it just comes out and I, I fucking love it. I, I've always respected him for it. And best is the kind of dude to give you a compliment and not sound like an asshole or not sound like a pervert or not sound like he's, his compliments to women are so clean, but smooth. It's like, you don't even know what to do with it. <laughs> you know, and I've always admired that about best. And he kind of just showed me that it is possible at any age to be a gentleman, to be smooth, and to still pursue your dreams. And that's exactly why I wanted him on the show. Because um, fun fact is that Best got some serious background. He was in um, a group riff. I know y'all know my 80s babies, 90s babies. You know what I'm talking about. Right. Um, he was in um, the Lean On Me movie. He was the guy with the red hat, with the, with, the, with the shirt he was singing. And even to this day, I've heard Best sing like in person, like out of the blue a few times and it's just i'm telling you best name should be smooth like that's it just smooth he's just a smooth dude and he's got quite the background and if anybody if anybody can talk to us about pursuing your dreams keep on going whether something stops continue if anybody could give us anything regarding artistry and embracing your artistry whichever it is it is this man right here Look at this. Welcome to my show, Best. Ah! Come on, baby. I'm, a fan. No. I'm such a I'm fan. I'm a fan girl right now. Best is my dear friend, but I'm also a fan. I've been to his shows. I've seen his performances. Who you see on stage is this person in your face. He's just in his shows. He's welcoming. He looks at everybody. He knows who's there. It's it's the same love regardless. So now yeah. that I gave my little yo. speech about why I adore best, hi. <laughs> What's up, B? Hey, yo, B, I just want to say this, all right? Before yes. we even get jumping, yes. I just would like to say, like, I'm so proud of you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because we talked about this podcast thing yes. at the job. Yes, best was one of the we, first people. Yes. Listen, I saw it coming into fruition. I saw you. <laughs> thinking about it and you was like, yo, you know what? I'm going to do it. And I even told you, I said, listen, B, yep. you should do that because you have such a great personality. Thank you. you know what I mean? You know how to talk to people. You should do it. Thank and it's just like, it's, it's, listen, I don't want to tear it up up here. You understand no, what I'm saying? Not, I'm, listen, not. I'm not going, <laughs> listen, I'm not going to tear up right here, right now. You understand <laughs> what I'm saying? What I'm saying is, like the energy that you pour out, man, like you have like so many switches, man, that I've seen, you know what I mean? But this right here, man, like this is a celebration because you talked about it and I love it that you're going for what you know. Yeah. This is you all day. You look beautiful mm -hmm. and you killing the spot, man. You on your second season. Yeah. Let's get it, B. Let's get it. <laughs> Yo, I, yo, he actually, this is true. Best was one of the first people, and this was even before, before I even had like a title or anything. I, I just spoke to Best. I remember we were working one night. We worked overnight. Overnight, let me tell you what I love about working overnight. You build a different relationship. Yes. No, I'm not talking about fucking. I'm not talking not about that. sex. I'm not talking about that. Not when that. you work overnight, you build a relationship. It's a click. It's a you click. You I mean? built that. You built that. And we built that. Yo, best is like my brother. Like, yeah. I have family for life. You know, we may get along today and not tomorrow, but I'm going to tell you right now, I got you for life. Like, we built this thing. And I remember best and I always got into conversation. And he was one of the first people I ever even 
mentioned this too, and Bess was with it from jump. He was like, yo, do it, B. Do you gotta it, do B. it. <laughs> you have so, to do it. Oh my God. And 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 you know, I, I I'm on my way, man. And I have to, and that's why I wanted you on the show so bad because I feel like people need to hear this, you know, go for it, whatever it is. And if it's you, embrace it. And that's who you are, Bess. You embrace your talents from shit from when i even saw the movie lean on me that's why i first saw you the first time i ever saw best right. was on lean on me and then right. when he was coming to work everybody was like yeah we got this dude he was in the movie before and i'm like who 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 the fuck are you talking about they're like yo do we <laughs> see lean on me i was like hell yeah i was like yo if you're from jersey and you haven't seen lean on me don't tell nobody everybody's seen lean on me listen but when they if told you haven't me, seen it if you haven't seen Lean on Me, then you have been under a rock a big for the past rock. 30 years. You have it's to understand not. this. It's one of the most classics. To me, yeah. Lean on Me is like a classic, like a Bronx tale. Like, right. like it's a classic. Like, you can't tell me you know Jersey and you haven't seen Lean on Me. Exactly. Okay? So when they told me, I was like, okay, cool. And then I thought, I thought you were going to come in and just be like some hot shot, like bougie fucking guy. No, the warmest heart, the warmest man I have ever met at that point is best. All Jeff, right, B. Hands down. B. So B, listen. <laughs> listen. Listen. It's true. And I'm not bullshitting. I, I see you know me, best. You know me. You, you know me. Like listen, it. you never bullshit. It's I'm not never bullshit. in your vocab. It's real <laughs> or not. You won't say it. If it's not real, you won't say it. Hello. So I'm telling you. I'm telling you. When Best came through, I'm not gonna lie. It might like I mean it wasn't just me. We were all like, okay, great. Now we got this bullshit ass celebrity coming in. Yeah, uh, uh, whatever. Best won us from the moment he walked in the building. First of all, he smelled good as shit. Like he smelled so damn good. I was like, <laughs> like what is that? And then he, you know, he pulled up and he introduced himself a complete gentleman. And even to this okay. day, same uh-huh. thing. Are we so, family, B? Always, always. So before we get into all this, um, I feel like you have so many great things to share. So before we get into detail and all that stuff, tell me a little bit about you, your background, how you are here today, where you started. I mean, you started with Riff, right? Well, and then, go ahead. Well, well, basically, um, you're talking about in the music business or like where I got my beginnings? Ooh, I want it all. Give you want me it all? Give me all of it. All right, let's all bring it. it. All right, so oh. basically, like, growing up growing up in a, um, you know, my mother was a single mom because my father had moved out of the house. Okay. You know what I mean? I'm half black, half an Italian. Mm-hmm. You know, all right? So um, my mother raised myself with uh, my two sisters. Okay. And... I, I never really, like, I grew up watching my mother sing at church, okay? I never really wanted to pursue the singing aspect of it, man. I was like a musician. I learned how to play drums at a real young age. So I used to play the drums for the church choir. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, be seriously, like, growing up, you know, just watching my mom perform, like, she was my idol, like, just watching her get down the way she sang, sing like an angel, beautiful, right? Yeah. So I watched her, I picked up, I, I, I wasn't, I didn't know at the time that everything that she was doing was being installed in the mental. You understand what I'm saying? Like just the way she did her runs, the way she sang, the way she did her thing, everything was being embedded into my soul. So I became a drummer, a really, really good drummer. One of the best in P-Town. I'm going to go ahead. Hey, and man, 100, yeah. I'm going to keep it 100,000 right now, keep okay? Keep it 100,000, best. Straight up. <laughs> I was one of the best I considered, you know what I mean? But uh, just watching, watching her uh, was one day I was in junior choir rehearsal. And my mom's, like, when I was younger, I had a stutter. I used to stutter real bad. I had a speech impediment. I couldn't really? speak. I couldn't speak at all. I was so shy. You know what I mean? And my mother knew that. You know what I mean? She knew that. So she tried to break me. She was like, listen, I got I to gotta let people know. My mother was the organist for the junior choir. So she actually had me like 
it's like 20, 30 kids, you know, like 15 adults at this rehearsal. She calls me up, Mike, come here, come here. She says, I want you to sing this song. I want you to learn this song and sing this song on the choir. And I was like, Ma, you know what I mean? I'm a, you know, I'm a drummer, you know? She goes, yeah, but I, I want you to sing this song. She knew, so huh? I, she knew something that I didn't know. But anyway, moving forward, going through that phase right there is when I knew that I had a voice. My mom told me I had a beautiful voice. I believe anything that she said. Now on that day, like when she had me sing, I was mad at her for about a good two days because I was shy. Mm -hmm. But after that, I learned how to sing, you know, making harmony with my two sisters and stuff like that. That's where I got my start. That's when I knew that I had something else other than being a musician, drummer. like drummer. Pat, moving forward, <clears throat> in high school, this is how Riff got started, okay? If, yeah. you know, I'm going to give the history of Riff. We basically went into high school. And, you know, just so you know, I had friends before we went to high school, you know, that I hooked up with in church. I knew that they could sing and stuff like that there. That's just a little history. But when I got to high school, Mr. Clark, who was the principal at the, at the um, high school, yes, he had just thrown out 200 fucking students from not you know, doing what they had to do in the school, meaning... Hold up, pause. You mean to tell me you lived that movie? I lived you that were, movie. You were there, like, you see... Okay, so if you guys see Lean on Me, that what he's talking about is when Mr. Clark came in and he literally dead ass. He put, you put chains on the doors. He kicked mad people out. All of that. You lived that? Listen to me. Oh, shit. A year before I got there. Check this out. A year before I got there, Mr. Clark held a assembly program and he had about 200 students on the stage and he had went through the database and you know what I mean and found out that they weren't doing their work they, they were skipping class they weren't mm -hmm. weren't doing the tests they weren't doing none of that he's like yo they fighting it they fighting in the school they they smoking they walking around the building he's like okay he held this assembly and he threw them out into the world. He's like, listen, we are a school. We're ready to make some changes and we're here. You have to come here to learn. If not, I will throw you out. Not only that, you're going to learn the school song Hi. Hi. as you know it. And if you don't know the school song, he was like, yo, I'm going to suspend you. He said, I'm going to stop you in the hallway, whatever. He demanded that everybody learn the school song. Now, check this out. When I got there, he held another assembly. When we got there, he held an assembly with the whole school. It was like, listen, I just threw out 200 something students. He said, listen, I'll do it again. He said, if y'all coming in here thinking that y'all gonna come here and disrupt Eastside High School, I promise you, I will throw you out expeditiously. Okay? So our mindset going into the school was to be on our P's and Q's because Mr. Clark didn't play. Mm -hmm. All right, now watch this. Bam. Fast forward, like maybe like a month in to the school year. I get a phone call. No, I get a, you know, the loud speakers that's in the yeah, room. Yeah, 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 I yeah. hear over the loudspeaker, Michael Best, come to the office. So I'm sitting in homeroom, the first period of the class. So I'm like, huh? <laughs> So the homeroom teacher said, Mike, Mr. Uh, Mr. Clark wants you. So if you're getting called to the office, you're thinking something's oh, going, on, something's <laughs> going on. So I get down there, okay, B? Yeah. And when I get there, the secretary points to the office and goes, you can go in the office. I go in, the, I go in his office. He's standing there with his bullhorn and he's looking at me. And there's two girls in the corner sitting down. Right mm -hmm. now, pause. One of the girls I liked, right? And the other girl ended up being my baby's mom. Check it out, okay. check it out. So basically he asked me, Mr. Best, which one of these girls do you go with? Which, which one of these girls are you dating? And I tell him, Mr. Clark, I'm not dating neither one of them. He said, do you like these girls? I said, yeah, you know. He goes, 
Mr. Best, he said, I don't like that. He said, I think you're a playboy. This is my first, this is my freshman year. He goes, okay. I think you are a playboy. He said, just for that, sir. He said, I want you to sing the school song for me. And I begged him, I said, Mr. Clark, I said, if you let me come back here tomorrow, I said, I promise you, I will blow you away with this school song, right? Okay. He said, you are very lucky today, Mr. Bess. He said, Mr. Playboy, he said, you are lucky because today is secretary day and I'm gonna have the secretary sing it. But if you don't come here tomorrow, and sing this school song, I'm gonna suspend you for 21 days, which means you have to repeat the year over. Stop it. B, I left. After school, I left. I went over to two good friends of, two good friends of mine. We grew up together. I knew they could sing. Yeah. Anthony and Dwayne, all right? So we basically did a, did a arrangement of the school song. Truth be told, I didn't know the school song. You know what I mean? I wasn't, I wasn't like, had he had, had he had me sing it at that time, I'd have been suspended. You fucked it up. Yeah. So it, it was only God that he let me slide. I came back the next day, you know what I mean? As he told, as he told me and was like, all right, I'm ready. So it, it was early in the morning. Every morning he would have somebody sing the school song as it was. Now, back in the day, the school song sounded like some opera shit. Okay. The east side high by thy side will stand and always praise our day. Real quiet shit, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Real, real basic. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Real quiet shit. So, <laughs> uh, so he goes, okay, ladies and gentlemen, he said, rising up. He did the national anthem and he said, okay, rise up for the school song. He said, today, we have a special guest today. He's a playboy. <laughs> he said that. <laughs> Over the last speaker, he go, he's a, he's a playboy. And I want Mr. Playboy. As a matter of fact, your little group that you got here is called the Playboys, right? <laughs> he said, and la ladies and gentlemen, they are going to sing the school song for us. Yo, yeah. B. Killed it. We broke out to that. Fairy side, yeah. our son will stand and always pray. Yo, D, B, B, we broke out of that. After we finished, he was standing there the whole time like this, like looking at us. And I'm thinking, grilling ya. It's not impressing him. He's getting ready to suspend me. Oh, shit. Yo, yeah. yo when we finish the song, all you heard was, it was like a lion, like a roar of like all the kids, like, Wah. you heard the, Wah. you heard the clapping of the whole entire school. Like it was oh my crazy. God. Killed it. And he looked at me, he was like, whoa. He said, listen, he said at this time, he said, I want everybody to learn the school song exactly the way you heard it today. He said, thank you for recreating our school song. And he had us sing it every day that year in the morning. I was a little, I, I got a little popular. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, B? Yeah. <laughs> so B, so B, yeah. after that, we we uh hooked up with two more guys, which was yeah. Kenny Kelly and Stephen Capers, which is my cousin. We yeah. put two more guys in, in the group. We changed it around, man. And we sang that song for a whole year, man, you know, proving that we was the best. We had to like after that, everybody in the school tried, tried making up groups Something and, else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and trying to trying to battle us and shit like that. There, it wasn't working. We was housing them. Mr. Clark came to us and was like, "Listen, I'm having a movie done about our school, and I want you guys to be in it." This is that year. He said it. He said it. So we like, yeah, all right, cool, whatever, what, whatever. You know. So you mean to tell me you this happened before it? The movie was even created. You literally redid the school no. song before it was ever even the movie was was ever even thought of. Before it wasn't even. Stop listen, it, yo! Listen, fun facts. Learn something. Listen, the school song was created, but we took it and flipped it to the doo wop sound that's on the movie. Like, like we literally flipped it, and he made everybody in the school sing it the way we did it. Wow, 
I didn't see that. I didn't know. I, I thought that that was just like, you know how some movies are real true stories, but some things get tweaked. I didn't know this was like legit. You, you literally recreated the song to the East Side school before the movie was even brought to, to life. B, they singing it uh, like that right now, today. It's still- Stop the, it. So it's still the, 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 the song. It's still wow. the arrangement that we did it because we, because we made it famous, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. See, when he told us about that, Warner Brothers didn't come that year. They came the following year, which was when I was in 10th grade, they came through. You saw Morgan Freeman, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. You know, walking through, walking through the building, you know, studying Mr. Clark, like studying his oh, moves, really? watching how he did things. Like you, like he would tell us, listen, we have people in the building today be on your best behavior. We have Warner Brothers here. I told y'all that we're going to be doing a movie. Be on your best behavior. We have Mr. Morgan Freeman in the building. You so, know what I mean? So do you think that Morgan Freeman did a very good rendition of Mr. Clark? Like he played him really well? That's a very good question. I think mm -hmm. he did a splendiferous. <laughs> Version <laughs> of Mr. Clark. <laughs> Yo. Difference. He did an excellent he did a, okay. job of Mr. Clark. He studied him down to, I mean, everything, man. He, wow. he, did, it. He, he did that thing. And meeting him, all right, so hold on. I okay, got to gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta tell you this part. So <laughs> one day, Riff, one day the Playboys was in rehearsal, mm -hmm. okay, practicing. You know, because now we know that we're going to be in the movie and all, all that stuff. Yo, so we we started, you know, one of the guys in the group started going to church. We call it going to church, black church, you understand? Where they doing all these runs and riffs. My manager stopped the rehearsal and was like, yo, listen, listen. He said, y'all need to change our names to Riff. And that's how Riff was born. We changed our name to Riff. And we we... We auditioned for Warner Brothers. Well, not auditioned. We were already put in the movie as for Mr. Clark. Mm -hmm. But they wanted to actually hear the way we did the song. And when they heard it, and they heard our story, like how it all came to play, they wrote it in kind of like how it happened. You know what I mean? Like we got busted in the bathroom or something. Mm -hmm. And boom, Mr. Clark heard the school song for the first time. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, he was looking at it, he was like, okay, I want everybody to learn it like this. And that's how we got our start in the movie Lean On Me, man. We landed, we landed that thing. It was timing, B. Yo, you, you know what, yo, and I, I'm glad you said that, and I know people are probably gonna get tired of me saying it. I cannot tell you guys the importance of time. Yeah. Timing is everything. During that whole, lean on me process like while we was filming i started making money like i was making more money than i could ever dream as a young dude you know what i'm saying so i was able to get my mom's them up out of there out of my auntie's house and move into our own home again you know what i mean it was it, it was through god like blessed me to to reinvent myself like as far as like that whole thing that went down. Like, I thank my baby moms for being a douchebag, like trying to catch me out there or something like that, man. And because straight up and down, if it wasn't for that, Riff would never have been, had, had started and we would have never had our shot. Because because she came in there with her friend because she was jealous. She wanted to find out if I liked her friend. She took it to Mr. Clark, figured Mr. Clark Fixes Clark everything. Will intimidate your ass and find out. Hey, he gonna get down to the bottom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we ended up, you know, basically starting a career right there at East High School. We landed a record deal. We had, uh, 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 like, we put out a CD in 1991. We had three top ten hits in the, in, in the 90s. So now we had a number one movie mm -hmm. that came out in eighty in 89. Mm -hmm. And then we had three top 20 hits, man. And we, you know, we was just being blessed. We had the title soundtrack of White Man Can't Jump. I don't know if you guys seen the movie White Man Can't Jump. Yo, if y'all haven't seen that, you're playing. 
You're literally living on the rock. Hello. If you haven't seen White Man Can't Jump with Woody Harrison, yes. Rosie Perez, which is yes. my girl, yes. okay, um, and Wesley Snipes, yes. we had the title cut of that movie. If you watch the movie through its entirety, it will show the video that we cut for the movie, White Man Can't Jump. You will see it. You know what I mean? So we, we ended up doing some big things. We were all over TV, Arsenio Hall, Jay Leno, Soul Train. We was being blessed. We went on tour. Like we didn't do club days. We, was, we went straight from recording our album, jumping right on tour with Vanilla Ice, Ice Ice Baby. We opened up for him for six months and he was selling out football fields. You understand me? Football fields. Right after that, that tour was over. We went on tour with LL Cool J. We opened up for the Mama Said Knock You Out. Hey. Mama Said Knock You Out. <laughs> we opened up for LL for six months. Wow. Yeah, we, then we took it cross seas. We traveled, man. I, I had a great, great time, man. You know what I mean? And the group is still together today. Yes, they you are. Know I mean? yes, and, you know, are. we have a new album. That's yeah. going to be coming out. But we're grinding. We are you. grinding. You've been to the shows, B. Yes. You know what it is. We, yes, we, I do. You know, we are we're blessed. All, we're all like, this is for like the young women who want to know what a man, a real man looks like. And this is for the grown and sexy who need a reminder. <laughs> I, That's love that. I love it. Because <laughs> let me tell you something, ladies. If, you, if you've been in a situation where you're like, damn, I just want to know what a man, like a man look like, what he feel like. I'm telling you, this is the concert you want to go to. If you need to remind your man, honey, you forgot what it's like to be sensual, a gentleman, chivalry, and all of that, go to the show. Listen, man. These are, these are grown ass men, but uh, honey. We are. Yo, best is out here working, y'all. How do you keep that fire? I mean, that's over 30 years, best. That's a 30 year career. B, a lot of people can't claim that. B, I'm going to go ahead and tell you <clears throat> again. Until the casket drop, I am going to continue to rickety rock the spot. You understand what I'm saying? I, I can't let it go. I believe it. It's, it's, I believe listen, it. It's, it was put in me a long time ago. You know what I mean? Never give up on your dreams, no matter what. It's, if you can breathe air, you know what I mean? If you can think it, you can do it. Mm. And that's the bottom line. I try to live by that. You know what I mean? I truly believe that, that my life is written out already. You know what I mean? It's written. So the steps that I'm taking right now, you know what I mean? It's just being a, like a page, being turned by God, leading me in the right direction. I believe it's in the right direction. Mm -hmm. We do... Since that movie, man, I've been grinding, 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 man. We even took a break where I ended up joining another group, mm -hmm. signed to Michael Jackson's label, MJJ Records, mm -hmm. um, on Sony, and we put out a, a, another album under another name by the name of Men of Vision. Yes, and yes. Since then, you know what I mean, even that group, we just got back in the studio. We're doing another record. We started last week. We started doing that album. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to have two albums coming out. Plus, I'm working on my solo project. Come on, best. Which is, which is a lot of fun because I get to do things that I can't do with the group. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I get to do stuff that I personally like. You know, Because when you're in a group, everybody has to like. Mm -hmm. certain things. Now, I'm just a big, I take from everybody. Mm -hmm. Like I, I, you know, like I said, when I was growing up, I watched my mom. But as I got into the music and learning how to sing, I watched Michael Jackson. I watched Prince. I watched, I watched um, everybody that was out in the 80s, man. Like, like the 80s, I watched those guys, like the New Edition, the Force MDs, you know what I mean? Full Force. Lisa Lisa and Colt Jam was my first concert I ever went to I'm ever. Good. Yeah. Ever at Radio City Music Hall. Hey. It was Lisa, Lisa and Colt Jam and Expose. Ooh, okay, okay. Let me 
be the one. Dude. Yeah. Yo, yo, hey, listen, listen, listen. It was my first concert I ever been to. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I took from all of these guys, like as far as watching them on stage, like knowing, you know, being a part of Michael Jackson himself, his, wow. his record label. Like he signed me to his, to his record label. What did that feel like for you at that moment to, to have one of the best artists of all time sign you to his label? What was that like for you guys? Amazing. <laughs> Cause first, first of all, I didn't see him. You know what I mean? Like I didn't know that, you know, Michael Jackson was gonna be mm -hmm. at the meeting. Cause we, we had to, what happened was the group that we joined, Men of Vision, they had already had a group together. Right. And what happened was they lost three of their members on some bullshit. They ended up breaking up. Mm -hmm. So Riff had was taking a break. We we took we took a break. We wasn't singing anymore. Everybody was doing their own thing. Except mm -hmm. except me and Anthony and Dwayne, the two guys that helped me start the group. We didn't we weren't doing anything. So we got a call to be a part of this group. So we auditioned for Michael Jackson, Tommy Mottola. Ooh, heavy. Um, 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 it was Corey Rooney. Mm -hmm. um, it was Jerry Greenberg, Ken Komasar, and Teddy Riley. Like, Teddy Riley, yep. all in this room. Teddy Riley was the only one that wasn't there because he was on tour with Black Street. Yeah, And yep. Black Street had just drop no diggity they was go, they, they yeah, were on yeah. fire you understand yeah. so we end up doing the deal with michael michael jackson was like you oh god you guys oh my god you guys sound great oh my god <laughs> you guys oh so it was like an honor to to for him to put the stamp on it like yo yeah this is the group can you just tell me i know you talked about what artistry what what it is for you and that you're you're gonna do it until the casket fall honey mm -hmm. what does your artistry represent to you how do how does it represent you what does it represent to you how do you want to what do you want to give people from your artistry from your music see that's a good question man i'm it's kind of like you ask me my you know like after it all done like what is it like yeah. my what do I want my legacy to be? That's yes, what it yes, sounds yes, like. That's a better that. question. What is your legacy? What is it? Uh, listen, I just want people to be able to know, and when they listen to my music, that I always spoke about love. Everybody needs love, man. You know what I mean? Music is love. The you know love is mean? love. Mm. And, 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 and that's pretty much. I want everybody to know when they hear a Mr. Best or a Nitty Green, I have so many names, but like when they hear a record that I've done, I want my legacy to be like he always sing about love. And that's it. And that's what I'm all about, man. I'm about love and loving somebody, you know, being true to your lady and, and, and like, like treating your lady like she needs to be treated. As long as she's returning that, you've yes. got to give it to her yes. triple Talk about time it, yes. over. Let's talk about this, please. Let's talk about this. Please. Triple time over. You got to give it back to her. Like, my oh. lady, like, she's been rocking with me, man, heavy. And, 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 and I, I don't... Not the I, silver, right? That's her name? Yeah, yeah. Hey. Silver. And, silver. And, silver. And, and, and she's been in my corner the whole time, man. And, like, like I'm just, I'm grateful to have somebody that's loyal. Hmm. Loyalty is a big thing. I'd rather loyalty, to be honest with you, I'd rather loyal, loyalty first and the love will come. But I'm going to let you know, man, that loyalty is strong. When you got somebody behind you, man, that is loyal, you can rock. Like, it's, it's, it's doors will open, man, because you got your team. You just, you, you know, they're there with you. They riding with you until it's all said and done. So basically... I just want my legacy to be about love, that I've taught love through my music. And I was a stand-up guy. Like, you know what I mean? I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. I'm, listen, I'm going to give it to you clean. Give it to me clean, dirty, however, I'll take it. You understand what I'm saying? Clean. Yes. Straightforward. That's it. 
and I just want cats to accept me for who I am. Like when, like I said, when the casket drop, I want cats to go, yo, Bess was a straight up dude. Mm. That's it. And his music, he believed in it. And straight up, some of that stuff was dope. I'm not saying everything I'm going to do is going to be what it is, but it's, that's okay. But it is for me. You understand what I'm saying? I'm giving it to them the way I give it to them. Yes. And and you know what, Best? That's one of the things I've had to learn creating this podcast and stuff is that you can create for people in the sense where it's like you've got to cater to everybody because it's not going to work. It's not going to work. You from your heart, from your soul, from your spirit. And those who will like it will follow. And those who don't, you're free to like whatever you want. But I'm giving you my truth, my artistry. And, I, and you couldn't have said it better. And, and honestly, Bess, I'm going to tell you right now, if anybody were to ever ask me about Best, I would say what you just said. I just yeah. want you to know that the legacy you want to create and that you're creating, you're already living it. So it's a matter of just continuously until the casket falls. Thank you, sis. You know, I appreciate you. I appreciate And B, you, you, listen, you are the same way, though. I, you know, that's why, <laughs> that's why me and you, it's like this, goddammit. Because, yo, you, listen, I've seen you get bucked with cats when they ain't, when they acting funny, style. So oh, tell them, best, tell them. <laughs> they acting funny, style. It's like, what? Now you get ready to see Forsake come out on you right now. Hey! <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? It's just like, watch this. Mm -hmm. I got another switch. Yeah, I'll mm -hmm. smile with you. Mm -hmm. I'm cool with you, man. I would love you to death. But the oh, minute... Let them know, Bess, because you know me. Let them know. I know you. Who's the real B? Who's the real Linda? Let them know. There's only one. There's <laughs> only one, yo. There's only one. And, yo, I'm telling you, I've seen you flip. And it doesn't matter. It can be women, men. It doesn't matter. B is going to tell it to you. Raw, no chaser. Mm. That's why I'm so happy that you got this podcast because people are going to see and they and those that follow you already know that you give it to them raw no chaser and it's real like who they seeing right here is is realness man and that's the way it is yeah. I, and i and i i love it i love it man i think you're awesome that's stop you're gonna make me get emotional stop I'm it saying, i need to keep it together on the show <laughs> i'm just saying it's not a lot of real motherfuckers in the world, it's not a lot of real, like there's some fake cats, hey. some funny style cats, but you are not one of them. I wish more people were like you, B. And this is from the bottom of my heart. Like, made me cry. because, like, yeah, no, nah, I'm serious. Because, like, it, like it, it bugs, it bugs me out. Like, like the fakeness. Like, I don't like that, man. I like people, man, to keep it real, so you know who you're dealing with. Like, people don't got time. People don't have time. For the foolishness, especially not in these days and times. Not in these days, I ain't got it. I don't have time to bullshit you. I don't have it, and I don't have it in me. I don't have it in me. I don't. I don't. And you could tell when I'm being phony about some shit because I can't. I can't play it off. You know what I mean? Okay. But I'm glad you said that. How do you deal with the negativity and the fakeness in the industry for all of 30 years? How have you been able to manage? these kinds of people, these kinds of situations. How do you deal with that? Listen, you have to have people around you because you're not going to be able to see everything. Mm -hmm. So you have to be able to trust people, man, that you have in your corner to be your eyes and ears to be able to report to you the fakeness. Yeah. At the same time, you, this, is how you, this is how I learned to be real. Because you have to continue to be real and you have to be able to spot the snakes in the grass. You have to know how to do that. And you have to have a team of people that loves you unconditionally, that want to see you go. You know what I mean? Because if you go, they go. Everybody can't go. But the ones that's, that's with you that you handpicked can go. You can allow them to go. There's a lot of family members not going to be able to go. It's a lot, you know, you, you know, because they can't do what is asked of them, you know. So you have to be handle, able. They can't handle you at your best. Exactly. So everybody can't go. That's the bottom line. Exactly. You have to put people around you, man, that want to see it. 
And you will know right here the ones that's real. Because then the ones that's not, you'll cut them out. Mm. So I've learned that at an early age, man, just struggling up through Patterson, going to East Side. I always have to be protected. You have your Vibe Session show, which, by the way, I'm always watching, and I love it. Thank you, sis. I, I always watch this show, too. Yeah, because I love the fact that you, in Vibe Sessions, you you connect with a lot of artists that you've known throughout your career, mm -hmm. but you also connect with new artists, but you, you've you been in this in this industry for so long. It's like you have a different outlook, a different perspective. It's it's more than, than music for you. Oh, man. But that's what I love about your show. I'm telling y'all, if y'all haven't tuned in, they go live, vibe sessions on Facebook and all of that. Tune in. That shit is dope. Every Sunday at 7 o'clock. Hey! Ha, every Sunday. Tune in the vibe session. Our discussion is life, yes. love, and music. That's what we talk about. Life, love, and music. And if and I have... And if I have a artist on there, we celebrate their careers and what they put down musically and we talk about the success that they had but that's when we're doing music edition so it's life love and music i love it when we have the conversations though because we get to interact with the people that's watching and stuff like that and i love what you do you know what i mean you yo you crack me up man you're so such an entertainer i love it man i love it. especially when you talk and then you go into the spanish voices and stuff Yo, 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 B, and you talking fact, actual factuals, man, especially about the relationship shit. Y'all cats got to like, really, really, fellas, like, it's a new day. I'm just going to give this piece of advice. And, and believe me, man, I, listen, nobody's perfect in there. But if you love somebody, if you know somebody that is in your corner, man, cherish that. Because we're living in a time right now, man, where shit is so fucked up, it could get you distracted. Ooh. of the good oh. shit that's going on. How do you how do you handle distraction or creator's block? What do you do when you want to create like a new song or you have a new idea and and it's not hitting? How do you handle that? I, I, you know what? That's 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 a process that you really can't you know, cuz if I'm distracted and 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 I got like write, writer's block or something like that, it won't come like that. It could come to me like if I'm sleeping, mm. you know I, what I mean. I, it, and I can get an and I can get an idea, and I get up and I sing it into a recorder, or I write it down. I write the idea down, and I bring it to the group, or if it's for the group, or I if 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 it's meant for me, I keep it for me. The idea, so mm. it's you know that's something that you have to wait on God to give it to you. Okay, okay. And then when you get it. Hold on to it because those are gems. Mm. Sometimes you gotta step away, or sometimes, like you said, you just gotta let shit flow. Yo, can I can I can I tell you this? Mm -hmm. And this is for me too. We both started podcasts because we said we we said we we wanted to do it. We even said we wanted to do some things together, and I'm that's coming. To get it, like <laughs> and that's coming. Trust me, me yeah. and you're gonna be working together on some things. We're gonna kill them. Yeah, you already. So, B, I, I, I've seen this girl that I follow, right? I watch her. Mm -hmm. um, she does makeup, like, like on her podcast. Mm. When she started out, she said, I want to say like 10 people watching every week. Okay. 10 people watching every week, all right, for a year. Boom, it started picking up traction, man. She had a show, it started picking up traction. It's her third year, man. She has over a million viewers. Every time she click on, she has a million viewers. She's getting checks now from the platform. What I'm going to tell you is, is stay faithful to the grind, which I know that you will. Stay faithful to the grind. I'm going to stay faithful to the grind until the casket drop. We have to stay faithful to the grind and it will pay off. As long as you are real and authentic and believe in what you have, it's going to happen, man. You're going to create that fan base. People are going to pop on, be, 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 be lovable to the people that come in, thank them, 
And I promise you, every time you pop on, they're going to be there for you. So just, just do how me and you always do. When we come in contact with each other, it's love. That's just the way it is. When we worked that night shift, we knew the bond we had. It's the same shit on this podcast thing. You got to connect. I'm going to keep connect. it real. That's working overnight inspired the late night. Come on. Come on. Come on. It Come on, B. Inspiration. It was part of the inspiration. A lot took in, a lot of inspiration took into creating it. But I realized late night doesn't have to always be sexual, always be gr like gritty or raunchy. Nah. We worked overnight. And right. it was never like that. It was a fair, it was a bunch of people fucking kicking it. Kicking it, it. Working, kicking it. We sat down, we broke bread. Yo. Come on. Fuck out of here, man. Fuck out of here. So I was <laughs> late night, a new flow, a new flavor. Oh, man, we did it the way so, we did it. So, Bez, I'm telling you, Bez is, is, is a definitely a piece of why I created this. He was, he was supportive before I even had a name. You yeah. know what I mean? So it was like, and I was, the, what my last question was going to be, any advice for any fellow starving artist? And you just gave it to me. Come on, man. Stay faithful. Stay and faithful to the grind. Because I'm not going to lie. I do feel some kind of way. I'm like, yo, I didn't get that many views. I haven't gotten that many whatever. But you said it. Stay faithful. Stay consistent. Stay consistent. Stay grinding. Believe in your grind. Pe I don't care if it's three people. I, I, I swear to you, be just stay faithful to what you're doing. Cats is going to come. If you look, if you got a bowl of milk, right? You know you've seen stray cats outside your stray cats outside your house. You put a bowl of milk out there, mm. boom. You're gonna see them come. They're gonna come, they're gonna know that you are the one that cares for them. Feel they're gonna show up every time they get that bowl of milk. It's the same thing, man. People are like that. You stay faithful to your grind. And thank them when you're done. Right. Or thank them. Thank them right when you come on. Yo, I want to thank and name them. Boom, 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 boom. They feel like they part of the family. That's the way it is. That's it, man. Just do it. Like this podcast and like us talking about it and doing it. It's a it, it also healing us. It's teaching us a lot. Every since I started vibe sessions and I'm releasing some of the stuff that I talk about. Yo, I feel fucking better. Yo, my body was hurting. Like, I, was, I used to ache when, when I laid down and shit. Ever since I started my podcast, my body don't hurt, man. I feel like Superman up in there. I agree. I mean, the therapy. no, you're absolutely right. And I, and it, it's a, what, so people ask me, how do you feel about season one? I'm like, I, I feel like it could have been better. But what I am grateful for, Bess, and you mentioned it, is I, I see progress. From the it? very first episode to the last episode of season yeah. you see a difference. You see it grow. You see a growth because I, I'm not going to lie. You know I got a lot to say, but I was very low-key about what I had to say. I only spoke around people that I was comfortable with. And then right. everybody would tell me, yo, you need a podcast. Yo, you need a radio. Yo, you need a YouTube. Like, and it was just, I, I was so afraid of the judgment and acceptance because I was always judged, you know what I mean? Because I didn't hold my tongue. And then I realized, man, fuck that. You know how many women want to speak <laughs> like I want to speak, want to say what I want to say? Fuck this shit. I'm going to say what the fuck I want to say. And if you don't like it, turn the channel. Stop it. I you don't have to watch me. You ain't got to watch me. Other people watching, it's cool. You know? And I, to have, listen, guys, because we're at the end. He, he basically gave advice for the starving fellow artist I always add that to my shows because my show is based on artistry and regardless of your art I want people to to support each other and you hear it here from a legend yes he is a legend okay yes he has made history yes he has made monumental moves and yes he still pursues after 30 years it is honestly an honor to have this man compliment me the way that he has like, it's really hard to keep it together on this episode because sometimes I question myself, you know, and, and you just made me feel so much better and, and, and you kind of motivated me to just keep on pushing. 
You know what I mean? I think this is the perfect, perfect end of the season to have you on. And it's, it's not just an honor to have you on, Vest. It's, it's an honor to have you speak on me. We, you know? we just rapping. We rapping. We family. Listen, I feel at the house. So I got to be real. That's it. <laughs> real. I have to be real with, you know, with, uh, listen, I know that when I'm speaking to my sis, I got it. I'm, I'm going to keep it real because that's the way she is. I'm going to keep it. That's it. Account. That's what I mean. Give us your info, your, your podcast, your Instagram, your Facebook, whatever you got work and let them know so they can follow and all that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, thank you for having me be. I appreciate it for the bottom right. of my heart, like introducing me to your viewers. Yeah. Um, you can, you can definitely reach me, um, at Nitty Green. That's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Everything that's out there is at Nitty Green. You will know, you, you will see it at Nitty Green. If you want to follow my group, it's at Riff Sounds at Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, everywhere at Riff Sounds, man. You can go on. If you want to check out some of the music, man, we on all of the digital platforms, man. You can just tune in. You can stream our music, Riff Sounds, and everything that come up, you can check it out. And, you know, if you just want to follow me, stay up on what I'm doing, check us out every Sunday night. Yes. At seven o'clock on Bob Sessions, where we speak life, love, and music. Mm. And you have to understand that I'm going to be, I'm claiming it right now, I'm going to be a, 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 a popping guest on, on my sister's show. Like, I'm just going to pop up, man. We just going to chop it up, man, and just Listen. talk. And we just going to let it go. And she's going to do the same thing with me. So y'all can just... You let me know, and oh. I'm going to get on that show. I'm that ready. Cool. You know me. You know I don't filter. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right. I love it. Best, best. Bro, this was a long time coming. Oh, yeah. This was a long time coming, and I send you blessings. I'm going to always support you, always. I know. I support good people. I support humble people. I support good spirits. And that's what you got all around. And everybody around you is the same thing. You know, you. who are the people you hang with? And the people you hang with, same thing. So with that being said, my love, thank you from the bottom of my soul. Thank you for yeah. being on the show. And I can't wait to have you back. And guys, I hope you were paying attention. It's a grown-ass man talking. It's not a little boy saying shit. It's a grown-ass man talking. Oh, that's bad. We gonna see y'all next season too. Get uh -oh. it. <laughs> and that's say y'all catch y'all on the next one. So with that being said, Evie, we're gonna keep it short. Thank you for being my guest co-host for the season. I can't emphasize what it means that you even agreed to do it. The fact that we work together, I, I think a lot of people are gonna be watching like, yo, they on the podcast, they got, ah, you know. Oh, uh, it's been, you taught me a lot. You taught me how to keep my shit together because I'm, I'm very like trying to do 10 things at once. And she's like, like, Belinda, come back. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Bring it back. Yeah, you know, and um, I feel like yeah, I made no, a I friend. Think, I think you definitely, you have so much light to share. You have so oh. much love to share. And I think if it helps having me here, if it helps to bounce it off somebody, I'm It does. It. It, it made, it made a world of a difference for me to have somebody to talk. And I hope you get a million more co-hosts because honestly, it is a pleasure to be here. It is a pleasure to, to share a platform with you. Thank and you. we have so much growing to do and I'm happy to be a part of a stepping stone in, you. your, in your way to the top and which way it goes. And, and I think that if, if all else, I hope everyone takes a little bit of empowerment out of this and i think that you have so much more to offer so i hope that everyone continues to tune in and see and see yeah. this you know what i mean i see hope this so kind of it's been it's really it's really 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 been an honor man so i was really <laughs> i knew i knew when he when we were talking about how you know how to change a few things and this and the third i knew i knew i had to have you on it I and wait. i just i, I couldn't be i couldn't be more grateful and I really do hope that, you know, I get my next guest co-host. We'll see who that is. We'll see who it is. I have somebody. I got somebody online already. I can't wait to see. But um, I'm so happy that you were here. Your support, your opinion, Absolutely. your ideas, all of that matters, man. And and to see Domu Herepana, 
De, cause you're, what's your nationality? I'm Honduran. Honduran. I'm Dominican. Dos mujeres de que es hispana trabajando junta, working together, and making it, and just, just, it's, it, it's empowering yeah. to be empowered. Yeah. There's, there's something really wonderful about that. So I can't thank you enough. And yeah, it's extremely bittersweet because it's like she's leaving. Yo, this is the last time I'm going to see her. This is literally, she about to walk out this door. <laughs> And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, like, I mean, maybe, like, in the future, like, Wait, we, I mean, you know. we gonna talk. Yeah, but, but it's, it's like, like, you know, she ain't, you know, she gonna be right there no more. So it's, ah, uh, it's bittersweet. And I, you know what, you know what this feels like? It's like, can I tell you the truth? I'm gonna be super, I'm gonna tell y'all some fun fact. We used to work together, we left, we, we obviously left work due to the pandemic. But it felt like we weren't able to really give it a real goodbye. And I feel like right now, this is we my opportunity to together. tell whoever we ever worked with ever, whoever we together have ever worked with, I, love I, I can't tell y'all how much I love every single one of you I guys. I didn't like y'all before, but I love y'all. I now. love y'all. Some of y'all, wait, I'm going to keep it real. I'm going to keep it real. Some of y'all used to piss me off. But the same ones that used to piss me off are the same you. ones that I fucking love. Like I miss your, your I miss phone it. Calls. I miss the challenges, miss the, the phone calls, the <laughs>, laughs, the hard times, the good times, the challenges, yeah. the the memories, the records we hit, the ratings we got, the leaders we had, the people that worked next to me, the two girls that were by me, that stood by me and worked with me and trained me. I mean, I had two heavy hitters working with me. You know what I'm saying? So for everybody that we worked with, where we worked, thank you for helping me grow. You guys have taught me so much. Um, look at her, look at her. Look no, at her, no, her. Don't, 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 don't. <laughs> you, guys, ha, you guys taught me so much. I am not the same person I was when I walked in. And I, and I have to thank you guys yeah. for that. Y'all yeah. made me tougher. Y'all made me smarter, quicker, wittier, stronger. Y'all made me, y'all gave me that city shit. Yeah. And I got to thank y'all for that. Mm -hmm. You know, for everybody that I interacted with. I don't regret meeting not one person there. And I pray to all your, all gods, to all religions. I pray that God continues to bless you all. Mm -hmm. That he's looking out for y'all. That opportunities are, are in abundance. That... If I see you again, that I can give you a hug finally and give you a proper hello and a proper goodbye. Mm -hmm. I hope that you guys continue to fight, continue to stay strong, continue to push for what you want. Understand that it is not over and that you are loved, that Linda loves y'all. Every single person, I think it was like 1,400 people up in there. I don't give a shit what department, what it was. If I met you and I worked with you. I appreciate you. I acknowledge you, and you were fucking awesome. Shout out to the team. Y'all know. Y'all know. I don't need to say names. I mean, it's true. It's true. It's true. <laughs> it is. It's all love. It's gonna always be love. Even the people that challenge me the most, I appreciate you the most. Cause you helped build me. I was not this strong. So, from the bottom of my heart, thank you and thank you. And I'm gonna miss. Yes. I'm gonna miss coming here and you know shooting Sweaty. the shit and shooting the shit, <laughs> doing doing the thing. But I thank you for having me. I appreciate you, and I hope God can continue to bless you. Yes, and you too. You. Listen, I do. I think you're amazing. I think your approach, your personality, period, is gonna take you to another level with photography because this is the thing people think. That being a good photographer is being able to click at the right moment. No, you gotta be able to click with the client too. Mm. You gotta be able to click with You gotta the click client. twice. Click on a cam, click on a vibe. You gotta click. And you made that so easy for me. And I I I just I can't wait for people to meet you. I can't, I can't wait for people to come call you and work with you. I can't wait for people to get a taste of Evie. Evie shots. Yourself. No, Six feet wait. Yourself. I can't wait for people to get a taste of Evie's shots. No, that sounds like liquor. I just can't wait for to see who you work with and how you work with them and I, and the things you create. I cannot wait because there's so much love in your photographs. Yeah. I felt like everything I said was questionable. So <laughs> anyway, she wants to get weird with candy. <laughs> <laughs> no, but 
in all honesty, thank yes. you for having me. And, of course. And, and this has really been a pleasure. And My again, pleasure. It's been an honor I for me. I can't wait really. for season three. Y'all need to like, y'all need to... Wait, you say it best. What do you say? What? When you, when you wrap this up, you say... You gotta like, you gotta subscribe. Oh, I'm gonna say that shit, but for, put your shit on though. Candy creation, let's go. And I'm gonna oh, right, ending. Right, let's right, do it, right. let's do it. For the last time, talk about it. It was a blast. <laughs> I can't wait for season three. Make sure to follow me at Candy Creations on Instagram. And make sure that you continue to support small businesses, artists, and you continue to hone in on the art of whatever it is that is beautiful the and art precious of the to you. The art of the matter. And with that being said, please remember to, please, no, sorry. With all that being said, please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can catch us in action with my animated ass and her chill, you know, <laughs> kick, killing with the shit, you know. You'll catch us um, Late Night with Linda Rosa on YouTube, but you can also follow us and the link is in our bio, Late Night with Linda Rosa, Instagram, Facebook. Click the link in our bio and it'll take you to everything. Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, you name it, I'm on it, go get it, you got it, all right? So with all that being said, thank you guys for joining me. This is the end of season dos. Thank you. Thank you for your love, your support, your time, and your attention. I hope you guys have an amazing day and that tomorrow is even better. And I'll catch you at Sunday.